Today's topic is a continuation of yesterday's French Revolution discussion. Today we're going to talk about Louis XVI's really bad day and how the French Revolution began. Now please remember it's going to be a very different revolution than the American Revolution or the British Revolution. The influence of the Enlightenment is still going to be there, but they take it a different route. They try things differently, and I want you to see the results. To understand the course of the French Revolution, though, you've got to understand a little bit about the King and Queen of France at the time. The King of France during the French Revolution was Louis the Sixteenth. His wife was Marie Antoinette. She wasn't French. During this time period, royalty needed to marry royalty, so the Prince of France was married off to a princess from Austria, and eventually he becomes king. They get married at an early age, 15 for him, and he's king by the time he's 19. He's in charge of the country. 19 is when you're ready to party, when you're ready to have fun, when you're ready to enjoy life, and suddenly Louis is supposed to try to be in charge of the country and actually lead things. Well, he led things by having fun. We talked a couple of weeks ago about Charles II and how Charles II just wanted to enjoy being king of England. And Louis does the same thing in France. But England had been better off when Charles becomes king. By this time period, the poor in France were starving to death in the streets. And so having a partying king and queen wasn't something the French guys were really excited about. So Louis and Mary are going to upset people quick. There comes a time when you just you reach the limit of the money you can spend. Louis, though, he was a kid. He liked to live large. He liked to enjoy things. He liked to enjoy the finer side of life. My wife oftentimes claims that I have the same problem, that something comes out that I won't, I obsess over finding some way to get it. Right now, I want a, a Wii U that's coming out next year, and I'm looking at selling some of the things I've had most of my life that are kind of valuable uh, so I can get the money together, because right now we don't have the money. The fact that I'm you know, looking at selling these things so I can get a toy when I could have sold them to help pay bills, she's ready to beat me. Uh, Louis wound up in a similar spot. He owed a lot of money because he had helped us fight our revolution. They had fought the French in any war and they would lost. They're building that really big house called Versailles. And all kinds of money he needs. He goes to the bank and says, look, bank, why don't y'all lend me some more money? And the banks tell him, I'm sorry, Louis, you're at that point where you've, you've reached the limit. There is no more money to lend you. And he starts freaking out. You know, he wants more money so he can throw a party. And so then he decides maybe he can tax the people a little bit more. But you've got to remember the French peasants are already taxed to the point where they have nothing. So what's a king supposed to do? So he turns to the people. He says, look, people, I, I need some more money. There are parties still to be thrown. There is fun to still be had. Let's throw a big one. Give me the money so I can. He calls the Estates General together so they can discuss this possible new tax increase. Obviously, he had other things he wanted to do than just party, but he's getting everybody together to discuss the taxes. Remember, the Estates General has three groups and, and three people that have to pay, or three people who have to say, you know, there's one poor guy, one rich guy, and one priest guy. And These three guys get together and they're discussing things, and the poor guys pay all the taxes, basically, and... The third estate says, sure, we will actually agree to let you raise taxes. If that's all it's going to take to make you happy, King, we will do it. Because they were good French guys. But they had one little thing they wanted to fix. They wanted more votes than the other two estates. They were 97% of the French people. They paid probably 99% of the taxes, and yet they got the same number of votes as the other two groups. And they said, King, just... Let us have more votes in the General Assembly, the Estates General, and we will let you raise taxes. Sadly, King Louis did like King George did in England. He said, you know, no, that's okay. I'll just continue doing what I want to. I'll raise the taxes anyway. You'll be fine. Just keep on paying. The people did not appreciate this, and they began getting together, kind of like the people in the picture. They began forming a mob. Now, what the mob's going to do? Well, the people do what any reasonable person would do. They decided to break up and start off their own government. Still living in France. Still having a king, but they're going to start their own government. They're going to end the absolute monarchy of France. They're going to create an enlightened government. Now, it's not necessarily getting rid of the idea of a king. Maybe they would still have a king. But they're going to create a better, 
a newer France. They sat down and they wrote a new constitution, a new set of laws to govern this new France. They tried to think about the best place to meet. I told you yesterday that they sometimes would meet in parks and discuss enlightenment ideas. They decided the best place to have this meeting, though, was in a tennis court. They met in the king's front yard on his tennis courts. And so they called this new constitution, this new definition of French ideals of government, the tennis court oath. Got to be honest, it's not exactly an impressive, beautiful, magnificent name, but it's what they went with. To the French people of this time period, tennis was kind of like football is to Americans today. And so by having it at a tennis court, it would be like if we signed a new American government at a coliseum for football. And all the people were excited because tennis was what they did. The American Revolution began with two battles, Lexington and Concord. Two armies, soldiers, weapons, fighting it out to the last man standing. The French Revolution began with storming a prison. The Bastille was a, a prison devoted for the king's worst enemies, people that had said things about the king or about the government. They're called political prisoners. They didn't rob somebody, they didn't kill somebody, but they said some things about the king that the king didn't like, and they got locked up in the Bastille. The Bastille was also an armory, a place where weapons are held until the soldiers are ready for them. And the people decided that if they could do anything to signify their starting a new France, it would be taking the Bastille. So the poor rose up and they attacked this prison. They killed everybody that worked there. These guys were, you know, just basically doing their job, watching the prisoners, and now they're all dead. They freed the seven people in the prison. Seven prisoners. Not a huge prison. And they stole the weapons and, and gave the weapons out. I've talked a lot this year about The Avengers, which is a great movie. But my personal favorite movie of the year was The Dark Knight Rises. The Dark Knight Rises, when I was watching it, I I'm ashamed to say, because I love me some Batman. I was ashamed to say, though, throughout the entire movie, I was thinking about the French Revolution and talking to you about this this year. Because The Dark Knight Rises is almost like a, a play of the French Revolution. Bane, the big bad guy in the movie, decides to start off his conquest of Gotham. Uh, not by something that you would expect a villain to do in a movie, but by going in and breaking out all of the prisoners and giving them weapons. And then he tells the, the poor people in Gotham, you've been abused by the rich guys, and now me and the prisoners and all of you are going to fight back against the rich guys. And that's how the French Revolution began. In America, we celebrate our Independence Day on July 4th, when we sign the Declaration of Independence, supposedly. The French also celebrate an Independence Day. Now, they call it Bastille Day uh, for the storming of the Bastille. And it happened on July 14th. So July 14th is basically their Independence Day. They call it Bastille Day. Uh, but it's the same basic idea. The Bastille had been stormed. The weapons had been taken. The prisoners had been freed. The guards had been killed. The new constitution, the tennis court oath, had been signed. So what happens next? The poor began rioting. The poor guys in France were driven to almost a bloodlust. They were, they were insane with rage. For years they had been forced to pay all the taxes. For years they had lived with practically nothing while the rich guys in France had it all and were happy. For years they had been pushed around. They had only gotten one vote in the Estates General, even though they were 97% of the people. And finally, they weren't going to take it anymore. So the poor began breaking into rich guys' houses. They began killing the rich people. Now, the Estates General and the estate system was incredibly unfair. The rich guys continued getting richer and richer while the poor guys continued getting poorer and poorer, and no one cared. But the reaction was also horribly unfair. A lot of these rich guys really hadn't done anything to the poor people, and the rich kids were being killed. It was just a very bad time. Going back to the Dark Knight Rises, a similar thing happens. After Bane breaks the prisoners out and gives the guns to the prisoners, he convinces the poor people to go and start killing the rich guys in Gotham. 
towards the end, there's a really sad moment where Catwoman, who had been working with Bane, realizes that they've killed this rich family. And this rich family really hadn't done anything. And she picks up this guy's picture, and it's him, his wife, and his kids. And she realizes they're all gone, and they would killed them. And fortunately for the moviegoer, Catwoman realizes she needs to help Batman, and they save Gotham from evil Bane. But there's no Batman to save France. So tomorrow we will see what happens next.